extraordinary talent. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm backstage here with your new Right Coast Pro Heavyweight Champion, Bazooka Joe. The debut of a new Right Coast Pro Elite Pro, Eric Chaffel. Dubious is a great word to explain it. First, he used fake weights during our weightlifting contest. Aaron's dry. What a way to make your debut in RCP. Excellence of execution. Because 2014 is the year of the upgrade. Associate, you want to take this one and tell everyone what's so important about this bow tie? Max, my man, usually you're on top of it. You see the villains on the other side of the apron tonight. They took my cape, but they didn't take my heart. They didn't take the heritage. They didn't take the blood. You see, Max Meccano, Courageous Cruz is a true believer and is a true Super hero. Executive decisions. Sometimes you get what you ask for, man. Pick it up, Let's go, Tim. What happened tonight won't happen again. Get back out here. Rosie, announce it. Someone there is fishy about this contest. You want to come in and make a statement? You make a statement against professional wrestling's Man of Steel. You picked the wrong person, Stride. You are lucky that the entire locker room kept you away from me. I would have ripped that pretty blonde hair out of your head. Excessive ego. So striker, he wants to call me a cheater. He wants to call me a dirty player, but you know what I say? I say all's fair in school and wrestling. How do you think I got to be a valedictorian anyway? It didn't go awry. Some child was taking steroids out on the ringside and decides to pick up my wings. Athleticism, my humble, humble attitude. I'm sure I can pull the best out of one Anthony Bowens. The Bowens now, Anthony, earlier tonight, there was a little bit of friction at the end of your tag team match. Can you explain what happened there? Max, I can assure you that there's absolutely zero friction between myself and the Prince of the okay. State, Damian Gibbs. Okay. Then what are the odds of, say, winning the lottery? I'd say one in over three million. Okay. okay. Then what, are, what are the odds? What are the odds of becoming a self-made entrepreneur? <laughs> it's about one percent, and you're looking at it. Uh, very, very true. X marked the spot as Bright Coast Pro's RCP-10 was the place to be on January 18th. Frank J. Gorecki III's musical expertise exhilarated the Bright Coast. Action. In a match demanded by reigning champion King Mega, 
Bazooka Joe returned from his suspension with one purpose, to capture the Right Coast Pro Heavyweight Championship. With drive, determination, and pure attitude, Bazooka Joe brought a brand of physicality that Right Coast Pro has never before seen. In one of the hardest hitting, most intense matches ever witnessed in the RCP arena, both competitors tested the extreme resolution of one another. The match appeared to swing in favor of King Mega until Bazooka Joe connected with a lariat to the chin of the champion. Seeing stars, King Mega never fully recovered, allowing Bazooka Joe to pick apart his opponent until the end was nigh. A devastating 0-3 and a three count led to Bazooka Joe doing the one thing that no one else in the RCP roster has ever done, defeat King Mega to become the new Right Coast Pro Heavyweight Champion. Arrogant and egotistical as ever, Bazooka Joe insisted that CEO Mr. Christian not only congratulate, but acknowledge his victory. It kills me to do this. Congratulations, champ. I said, congratulations, champ. My first action as champion is to have you put this belt around my waist. Do it in front of the Bazooka Joe's arrogance did not stop there as he boldly proclaimed that he was a fighting champion, so much so that Mr. Christer could draw his opponents from a hat. Not one to be bullied, Mr. Christer took Joe's claim literally, stipulating that all of Bazooka Joe's title defenses will be drawn at random. A decision that has ruffled some feathers with RCP management. A basket was brought out, names thrown in a hat, Joe, you asked for this. Okay, that's what you're gonna do. Sometimes you get what you ask for, champ. Pick it up, brother! Let's go, champ! Who's that? Let me see, I'll tell you who that is. Good, good! Oh, there's a reason why you don't know who that is, Joe. So you've been gone the last three, four months, right? Yeah. Your opponent at our next show is none other than Joey Silver. February 22nd, we'll see Bazooka Joe defend his newly won Right Coast Pro Heavyweight Championship against University of Delaware student and RCP Elite Pro, Joey Silver. Do your homework, Joe. Joey! Do your homework. Appropriate. Unhappy with RCP's resident sound technician Steve-O, south of the border export Pedro Duro contracted the legendary chick magnet mariachi band for not only his entrance but for support throughout his entire match as the Mexican hardcore champion took on the real legendary chick magnet Mozart Fontaine in a bow tie versus mask match. All Pedro Duro had to do was defeat Mozart Fontaine to keep his legendary bow tie. However, if he lost, then Pedro would have to unmask in the center of the ring for all to see. Pedro Duro fought with purpose and determination, his band providing inspiration the entire time.
However, it seemed the Mexican hardcore champion on this night would need further momentum and a gift from above if he was to defeat the legendary Mozart Fontaine. Pedro found that momentum hidden in his mariachi band with a pendulum swing by the name of God's gift, Aaron Stride. The Mexican hardcore champion truly believes he is a chick magnet now with the victory and the bow tie. Congratulations, Pedro. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, idea. Caitlin. Pedro. Drinks. Move. Smooches. Yeah. Huh? Recently signed by Mr. Christer, Aaron Stride showed what little respect he had for RCP and Mozart Fontaine by taking out the head trainer with a shot to the head. RCP security and fancy mic work from Max Mikado got Aaron Stride under control just long enough to get a glimpse of his motivation, that he was here for someone else, and that RCP fans will find out who soon enough. What is so special about the bow tie? Max Mikado put two of the legendary chick magnets in front of the camera to find the answer. Max Mikado backstage here with two of the legendary chick magnets, Mozart Fontaine and Brian Sosha. Now, Mozart, it's just been announced that on February 22nd, you get a return match against the legendary Mexican chick magnet, the self-proclaimed chick magnet, Pedro Duro. But it's bow tie on a pole. Now, what is so important about this bow tie that you would risk life and limb? Brian Sosha, you want to take this one and tell everyone what's so important about this bow tie? Max, my man. Usually you're on top of it. I didn't know if you knew about this. We like you a lot, but we can't even show you what was written on this bow tie. The bow tie I referred to was our last match as a Chick Magnet team. Tobin and myself presented it to our man Mozart Fontaine. This tiny little message that means the world that, again, we love the fans, but we can't even share with you. Nobody can see it. It's kind of like a, a bond thing with the Chick Magnets, and nobody gets their hands on this. And Mozart, I know you're not going to let anybody, especially some corny, fake Mexicano Chick Magnet, get his hands on it. Listen, all kidding aside, we can come in here, we have a good time. We're the ladies, got man. We're the ladies, men. We're the chick magnets. We're out on the town. But I'm going to tell you something. February 22nd, when Mozart Fontaine comes back to Newark, Delaware, Pedro Doro is not going to have such a good time. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from the legendary chick magnets, Mozart Fontaine and Brian Sosha. Exertion. The mercenary Nicholas Solo battled the undefeated Colts in quest in a bout that saw interference from both manager Sebastian Knight and the injured Zack the Ripper Connor. Outnumbered and outgunned, Colts in quest had to rely on resilience and willpower to outlast Nicholas Solo's offensive onslaught. A student of the game, it was apparent Colton Quest had scouted Solo and knew it was just a matter of time before his temper got the best of him, surviving long enough for an opening to capitalize, teaching a valuable lesson to the wrestling mercenaries. One we will see if they'll heed on February 22nd. A moment of weakness can cost you your life. I learned this tonight. Colton, I want to thank you for teaching me something. You taught me to never give in and never show mercy. What happened tonight won't happen again. I know it won't. Exhaustion. While Colton Quest was celebrating his victory and nursing his wounds, God's gift, Aaron Stride, made his presence known once more, looking to make another statement by issuing a challenge to the red hot and still undefeated Colton Quest. Hungry to make a statement of his own, Colton Quest demanded that CEO Mr. Christer make a match on the spot with this conceited newcomer. 
It was a highly competitive match that seesaw back and forth, but ended when Aaron Stride seized a handful of tights and used the leverage to end Colton Quest's undefeated streak. Disappointed but not deterred in his quest to make a statement to all of Right Coast Pro, Colton Quest stepped up to the plate and boldly issued a challenge to none other than the valedictorian Billy Bax. Me down. Next month on February 22nd, I'm challenging Billy Bax to a match right here at Right Coast Pro. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Colton Quest issuing a challenge to the valedictorian Billy Bax on February 22nd. Excitement. It was non-stop excitement as the team of Courageous Crews, the Tribal Warrior Fala, and the debuting Eric Chappell took on Anthony Bowens, the Prince of Aesthetics Damian Gibbs, and self-made Michael Blake accompanied by his guy. Unable to stop the Tribal Warrior Fala or slow the energetic Eric Chappell. Anthony Bowens looked to sway momentum in his team's favor by focusing on the smallest of his opponents, Courageous Cruz. While on paper it was a sound strategy that his teammates also keyed in on, there's a reason why matches aren't settled on paper. Having the contest under control, two mistakes were made. The first, underestimating Courageous Cruz because of his size. The second, making a mockery of his cape. RCP's resident superhero bided his time, waited for the right opening, and then turned the tide, allowing the Tribal Warrior Fala and Eric Chapel to do what they do best, picking up the victory. Excommunicate. While it does not appear Anthony Bowens had a problem working with others, the Prince of Aesthetics, Damian Gibbs, felt otherwise. Friction. You call that friction? That is nothing that the Prince of Aesthetics, Damian Gibbs, can't handle. And let me tell you, yeah, I got stuck with a guy that doesn't lift any weights, can't carry his load, my back is killing me right now, but I'm confident that with my experience and my flawless facial symmetry and my perfect body proportions, my graceful athleticism, my humble, Humble attitude, I'm sure I can pull the best out of one Anthony Bowens. Well, thank you for your time. Again, the Prince of Aesthetics, Damian Gibbs. Backstage here with Anthony Vigilante Bowens. Now, Anthony, earlier tonight there was a little bit of friction at the end of your tag team match. Can you explain what happened there? Max, I can assure you that there's absolutely zero friction between myself and the Prince of Aesthetics, Damian Gibbs. And I guarantee you, I give it another chance that the both of us can take down whoever we face right here at Right Coast Pro. Excuses. Harry M. Baldwin was full of excuses when questioned about his tainted victory over heavyweight Sean Royal in Right Coast Pro's first ever Olympic Barbell Challenge. Max McCaddle backstage here with the definition of a ring technician, Harry M. Baldwin. Now, Harry, you had issued an Olympic Barbell Challenge to heavyweight Sean Royal, and let's say that challenge went awry. Wait, 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 wait. Awry? Put this where it's supposed to be, right here. It didn't go awry. Some child was taking steroids out on the ringside and decides to pick up my weights. I checked those weights. I checked his weights. Everything was perfect. Somebody else must have done something with those things. And then I get stuck in a match. I was supposed to be in a barbell challenge for crying out loud. While at first it appeared that Baldwin was the stronger of the two in performing the overhead press with 135 pounds, 
RCP intern Young Guns exposed to the Olympic Governing Committee and RCP fans the deception at play. This is supposed to be my celebratory ceremony, and you are ruining it. Get that out of my ring. I want Queen to stay here. Queen to stay here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sean. Just how and why Baldwin's barbell weighed in at only 55 pounds backstage is still a mystery. I think we need to settle this right here in the ring. Expose. With the barbell contest declared null and void, Harry M. Baldwin found himself in quite a hair-raising predicament as a match was made on the spot with the heavyweight pumped and ready to further expose Baldwin's for his cheating ways. Consistent with his earlier actions, Harry M. Baldwin used any and every trick in the book to gain the victory over heavyweight Sean Royal, pulling the wool over everyone's eyes once again. Backstage with heavyweight Sean Royal. Now, Sean, unfortunately, you were unsuccessful twice against Harry M. Baldwin, both by rather dubious means. How do you feel moving forward? Dubious is a great word to explain it. First, he used fake weights during our weightlifting contest. Now I can tell you, the International Olympic Committee would never allow that to happen. Second of all, during our match, you were choking, and for the three count, you had your feet on the ropes. Things shouldn't go like that in this locker room. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. Heavyweight Sean Royal, back to you. Exceptionalism. It was billed as the battle of RCP Titans as two of RCP's most versatile competitors squared off in what turned out as expected to be an exceptional display of athleticism, competition, and determination. Mr. Upgrade Mike Reed with advisor Clark Kelly came into the contest with a purpose. Feeling slighted in last month's Body Slam Challenge for the RCP Heavyweight Championship, Mike Reed made it known that he was never pinned and felt he should still be the rightful number one contender, if not the right coast pro heavyweight champion. Wrestling's Man of Steel, Chris Steeler, also came in the contest with a valid argument for being the number one contender after winning his last man standing match against the adrenaline, Ryan Rush. It was an evenly contested battle between these titans of the right coast that swayed back and forth like a pendulum throughout the entire contest. Ribs were bruised. Jaws dislocated. Eyes were blackened and tablets were destroyed. Each competitor showed resilience and resolve. And just when the tide had turned in favor of Chris Steeler, a ghost from his past caught up with him. With his opponent distracted, Mike Reed did what he does best and capitalized, giving wrestling's Man of Steel an upgrade he won't soon forget. Tonight, wrestling's Man of Steel, Chris Steeler, he met up with Kryptonite. See, Chris Steeler, you are a tremendous adversary. I give you all the credit in the world, kid. You gave me a run for my money. But who came out on top? Mike Reed. Now, last month, you and I had a little difference. You were more worried about yourself. We got it back on track this month. Now, February 22nd, my book's free. So RCP, by all means, any challenge you got, I'll be more than happy to oblige because 2014 is the year of the upgrade. 
exclamation. God's gift, Aaron Stride, delivered his third and final statement of the night. And what an exclamation it was, as the entire RCP locker room and security team had to intervene, leaving the question of just what happens next. Aaron Stride, what a way to make your debut in RCP. Who would have known that someone like you will hold a grudge for over 11 years. 11 years ago, you and me stepped foot into a professional wrestling school and you and me were good friends, but something went wrong inside of your head. You no longer cared about friendship. You no longer cared about the competition of being inside of that ring. All you cared was about the money. When it comes to the money, people will throw their friends to the side. People will kick their own mothers to the curb. Aaron Stride, you are one of those people. You come to RCP where I have reigned since I started. You want to come in and make a statement? You make a statement against professional wrestling's Man of Steel? You picked the wrong person, Stride. You are lucky that the entire locker room kept you away from me. I would have ripped that pretty blonde hair out of your head. You are going to see a side of the Man of Steel that no one has ever seen before and you are going to regret it. Extracurricular. Earlier that day, the entire Right Coast Pro family received some extracurricular insight thanks to former WWE superstar and RCP Elite Pro, Matt Stryker, who hosted an incredible and unique three-hour performance seminar. Lunch was served, notebooks issued, and then class was in session. Promos were filmed. Emotions extracted. In attendance, but apparently in need of some extra schooling, RCP Elite Pro Billy Bax was presented with an opportunity later that night to gain the respect he so desperately craved and a chance to prove that he was truly the valedictorian of professional wrestling by competing in an old school wrestling match. Well, what exactly is an old school wrestling match? Grab your notebooks because the word of this match is excellence. Ready? Class is now in session. I'm going to give you the opportunity to earn the respect of each and every one of these good people. Okay? I'll tell you what. Let us have a wrestling match. None of this punching and kicking and bouncing off the ropes and falling down and getting up and running around and sticking thumbs in people's eyes. Let's see what kind of man you are. And let's wrestle.
dismissed. On February 22nd, his right coast pro returns to the RCP Arena in Newark, Delaware for Elements of Chance. We hope to see you there. From Germany, my name is Hans, and this is Chow. Chow. <laughs> and we are the first Asian German Polynesian hip hop duo. We are here to rock the party. So put your hands up and say, Oh! Are you all gonna get down? You all gonna see? We're gonna be bringing you beats like me. You're gonna see? You're gonna know? He jump, I jump. You don't know? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 